Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. As you could see from the opening fireworks, we went over 10,000 subscribers this week. And I want to thank all of you that have subscribed. It uh, really uh, is important to me that uh, I get that kind of feedback from you. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why should they bother to subscribe to the channel? After all, YouTube doesn't send out emails anymore notifying you when uh, I do upload a new video. Well, there's several different reasons for subscribing. Number one is because it adds to my subscriber count. And that's very important in YouTube's algorithm because that is one factor that they weigh when it comes to deciding whether or not to promote new videos. And when they promote a new video, more people watch it, more people subscribe, and it just builds. Also, I make a certain amount of, uh, off of each uh, a minute that people view here on YouTube. And so it helps me in the long run if you subscribe and it increases my uh, the number of subscribers and the number of views and the amount of view time for each video. And I can make more off of this and keep buying all of the stuff that goes in to these videos. And I had to buy everything that goes into these modules except for the DCC Concepts alignment pins. Everything else I've purchased. Okay, and all of that is being paid for from the payments that I get from YouTube. So please go ahead, consider subscribing. If you haven't already, uh, please do that and uh, recommend the channel to your friends and the like. You know, it's really something to go over 10,000. I can't wait to hit 100,000 uh, if that ever comes. But, uh, uh, you know, you have to live one day at a time. So right now, I'm happy with 10,000 at this point. And maybe in another year it'll be 20. We'll see. Today we're finally going to get around to installing the pushrod mechanisms for these blue point switch machines that I talked about in a previous video. Okay, before we actually get started with doing any installations, I want to go over the basic components that make up the pushrod system. Okay, so the basic component at the heart of everything are uh, these two pieces here. You can see we have this yellow um, insert. It's very bendable, very flexible. Then we have this red tube, which is a little bit less flexible. And if you actually think about it, when you push on something like this, that's like a piece of spaghetti, it's going to flex and bend instead of actually pushing the mechanism on the blue point, which we want to, to throw. So what you do is by simply inserting the bendable, flexible component inside of a less flexible one, anytime you push against it, instead of it flexing back and forth, it's going to actually push against the blue point mechanism and make it move and therefore throw the turnout. So basically then, all you have to do is stabilize this red, flex, uh, uh, this red portion and it will keep the more flexible center push rod here from flexing all over the place and it will do its job. Okay? So what we have to do then is install this uh, with this little button and I'll show you those here. Uh, these are uh, basically a little wooden uh, turned uh, push button. Okay, and they're attached to the end of this with a simple screw that is inserted down through the center here of this open end of the, uh, of the push button. Okay, so that attaches it to the end here of this yellow push rod. Okay? And that's what transmits the power or uh, the push-pull power to move that switch machine and activate whichever route you want. Basically then, what I'm going to do then is install this underneath of the layout. This piece here goes on the fascia, okay? And I'll show you that in a minute. We'll take a look at how these are set up. Uh, and then this yellow portion is threaded through a hole through the fascia in the side of the baseboard. And then the red component on the inside is stabilized to the underside of the layout so that it can't move. Okay, so only this guy is moving. Okay, so I'm going to stabilize this and I'll show you how I do that. I use these nylon cable clamps. Now unfortunately, uh, I can only find these in 1 8 inch 
and quarter inch diameters. So this red component is slightly larger in diameter than one eighth and smaller than a quarter. So in order to uh, allow that uh, clamp to grip it, I took a five inch long piece of red electrician's tape and I wrap it around the outside of this tube. And then I can attach the cable clamp to it and screw it to the underside of the layout. And that's going to stabilize it and keep it from flexing around and moving. Okay, So that the only part that's moving when I push and pull on this uh, button here uh, is the end of the push rod. Okay. Now, in order to uh, connect this end to the activating arm here on the uh, blue point switch machine. You can see maybe it's got a small hole right here. Okay. In order to make that connection, we have to use this small little uh, piece of steel wire that's threaded the entire length of it. These come in a package. I think there's about 20 in a package that blue point sells. Um, the little push buttons they sell, there are six of these in a package and they come with the little screws and washers and everything. And then this simply gets screwed in to the end of the yellow push rod, okay? Like so. Now, how do you connect that all to the actual mechanism? Well, they have these devices, they're called a clevis, okay? And these pull apart right here and it's got a pin, and that pin goes through that hole in the arm on the blue point switch machine. And I'll show you how this all works in a minute. So, and again, they sell these. There's about 10 of these, I think, in a package. So, uh, basically, I got, uh, for the, this entire module, I purchased two packages of the push buttons. I put, I got one package of these guys here, and one package of the uh, threaded, threaded steel rod. So that's all it took for this entire layout. And of course, one package of these guys, because you get five uh, of these, five sets of the yellow and the red uh, that are three feet long. And I'm able to do all nine of the turnouts here on the layout using uh, one package then of the flexible push rod. And as again, two packages of the push buttons and one package each of the threaded rod and the, uh, and the clevises. Now, I will tell you that they sell a lot of other components that you can purchase for installing these. They have metal brackets you, that you can buy uh, that will stand off from the bottom of the layout and other things that make it a lot easier uh, to do this installation, possibly, than the way I'm going to show you. Uh, but it also almost doubles the cost of the installation. So to keep this cheap, I'm going to go with the method that I came up with using a lot of components that I had on hand. Okay, so you can see here the push buttons mounted on the fascia here. Uh, you can see I've already got it painted a nice green color. And it's a very easy movement uh, on the uh, push buttons to throw a turnout like that. That's all there is to it. And it makes for a very uh, neat uh, manual method for controlling your, uh, your turnouts, uh, as opposed to using a complicated electrical uh, uh, control panel type operation like I've uh, uh, used on the Piedmont Southern. And you know, it just simplifies things so much not to have to use accessory decoders and, and more complex wiring uh, and, and the like for building those control panels. So at some point I will uh, pick a color and paint these, maybe a nice uh, cream color like the uh, GWR used. So that gives you an idea of, of how, the, uh, how that's going to look once we get all of these installed here. So let me go ahead and zoom in here and we'll go ahead and get started with doing a, an example installation. Okay, I'm gonna begin uh, with my uh, power drill here. And I'm going to start with a 536, uh, 5 seconds uh, drill bit here in the drill. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to drill a hole in the top of the, um, of the layout here. Well, actually, it's the side and it's the fascia. And uh, I've already marked the locations for all of the, uh, 
for all of the push buttons on here. We're going to move up and go ahead and drill that hole. Okay, so I've already marked a position right here uh, on the front of the fascia. Uh, actually, I've marked all three positions for these three, uh, for three of the uh, blue point turnouts. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start by drilling a hole through here. get our trash dust out of the way. Okay. So as you can see now, the push button's in place with the push rod going down in the opening. So let's move back down in here to take a look at the connections that we need to make underneath of the layout. Now, the next thing I'll show you is, I have found that I get good positioning. Let me get this wire out of the way. Okay. Now, I have found that the best way to position this here is to cut it back so that when the push button is all the way in, and this arm is pushed in all the way, to cut it back so that we're one and a quarter inches from the, um, from that hole in the uh, blue point uh, control arm. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to measure up one and a quarter inches here and then using my flush cutters I'm just going to cut right here. Okay. Okay, so now I've got that clipped to the correct length. I'm going to take the piece of, of threaded uh, steel rod and insert it into the cut end here. Let me uh, let me reshape that. It got a little bit oval due to the cutting pr procedure. There we go. And I'm going to insert that in there and start screwing it in. It's easier to do it if you take it out and hold it like this. And then you can grasp it in the middle of the thread because you're not going to use all of the threads. So you can just grasp the end of it and then twist it on. And conveniently, there are little ridges cast into this uh, flexible plastic material. So there's something to grip. They did think of that kind of thing. Okay, so I've got it on there. I'm going to slide it back into place like this. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is cut the red flexible or semi-flexible uh, rod to, to length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that right in here where I want it to be up against the inside where the uh, tube comes through. And let me put this up through here where I can get to it. Okay, so it's going to be right there. And then we want to come back up about two and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'm going to measure up two and a quarter inches and we're going to do the same cut type procedure right here. There. Now this flexible tube then goes up through here and it's going to be attached right here. And what I did was, this is a piece of one by uh, two, okay? And it's just screwed to the underside of the layout. And I'm using that as a place to, uh, to get a, a, a much straighter throw through here, okay? Uh, because this is about an inch off of the uh, bottom of the layout as is the uh, push rod up there, the push button. So I want to get these all so it's pretty much a straight throw through here. Okay, so what I want to do now then is prepare this for its installation. Okay. 
So for that, I'm going to take my electrician's tape and I'm going to pull off a five inch long piece. And I need to get my scissors and have those handy. Okay, so I've got my little uh, ruler here and we'll pull off five inches to here. Okay, that's good. And we'll cut that off. There. Now, let's, let's figure out where we want it placed. Okay, it has to be right here at the end. Okay, so I'm going to put that right on here like that and start twisting it around and just roll it like that into place. Okay, so it's giving me a, a nice thick point there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is take this nylon, uh, quarter inch nylon cable clamp and slip that into place here like so, right on our, the end of our tube. And I'm using those same uh, number four uh, uh, screws that I used for installing the Bluepoint switch machines. Okay, and that's just going to fit right like that. Now, I need to measure where it's going to be installed, so let's insert this back over the push rod. Okay, so that's all going to go right in through here. Okay. And we're going to have that one going right down there. Okay, so I'm going to install it right like that. And for that, I'm going to have to drill a hole. So let me mark the location of the pilot hole. And that's going to have to be right here. Okay. Now, let that sit and get my screwdriver so I can drill this little hole kind of quick. Okay. And now we're ready to install the cable clamp permanently. So I'm going to put my little screw back in here. Let me zoom in for this. Okay. Get my screwdriver and Okay, and now as you can see, this is not going to move, and this is going to be stable. Okay, now I can pull that out. I want to get this uh, threaded portion in here a little bit more, so I'm going to grab that in the center where I'm crushing the thread, and give it a few more twists and get that further up in there. Okay, so we have enough clearance there. Now let's test it again. Okay, so that's going to be attached to that via this clevis. Okay. okay, let's go ahead and attach the clevis to the blue point controller. Okay, so basically you just thread it on as I showed you to the end of that rod, metal rod, and bring it back in here and it's going to pop over that uh, device there. To open these, I just take a little screwdriver and put it in between the two blades on the clevis and that will pop it apart. And then get it down here so it's over the control rod there and maneuver it into position on that, whoops, popped off, there. Okay. So now, we have control. I'm going to check and see how far 
it is off up here. I'm going to tighten it up just a, a little bit. And I'm doing that just by simply turning that little uh, push button connected to the end of the push rod. Because that will control the length of throw here on that. Okay, so it's installed now. So let me go ahead and show you how it moves. You can see the uh, push, ro push rod is moving that little control arm and throwing the switch. And there's no problem at all. It's a good solid throw going all the way. And every time I do that, the uh, uh, contacts inside the, uh, these switches here are going to change. And that's going to control the polarity. And like I said, we'll see how to do that on Monday. Okay, so that's, that's all there is to it. It's very easy to do. And uh, in, long ca in cases where uh, it's a little bit longer throw, and let me show you this one here. In this case, it was a little bit longer throw here and some flexibility was needed. So what I did is I made the, the one um, cable clamp down here and then I added another cable clamp up here. I installed a second uh, piece of um, one by two up here and that allowed me to uh, put, it, put in a second cable clamp further up to stabilize this rod because it was flexing a little bit on this very long throw. But on this one, since it's a straight shot, there's no movement at all in that red tube on the outside. So we've got a good, good throw right there. Now, one thing I want to point out, as I said in the opening, um, Blue Point does make their own uh, devices for stabilizing their, you know, the, these uh, rods and their tubing. And you can buy those. They have the metal ones that are a standoff type of thing that you can attach to, all kinds of things. So if you go to their website or go to the walthers.com website, they, you know, have uh, photographs online of all the various components that are used for this. And what I've done here is just my way of going about doing it without all those other accessories. And it seems to work fairly well. One other thing that I will point out to you. Now I have put all of mine on the front, what I designate as the front of the module. But if you're, if you're going to be working potentially both sides of the module and you might be having operators on both sides, you can actually mount uh, another control rod to the other side because you know you've got a push from both sides will operate this. So you could actually add an additional control rod that goes through what I would call the back side of the module and controls the switch from there as well. So that's a, an, an added feature that you could try out. And I'm going to use it because I have another uh, situation and I'll show you this in the future once I get it installed because I'm not 100% sure it's going to work. But I have one switch machine here that uh, actually works in concert with another one further back on the other side of this divider uh, as part of a crossover. So anytime this one throws, the other one needs to throw too. So instead of having two push rods and two push buttons mounted on the fascia to control the two blue points for that uh, uh, crossover, I plan to add a, um, a long throw rod out the bottom of this one going through and over to the other one uh, so that one push button and one set of push rods can control both of the blue points. So we're going to see how that's going to work out. I'm not 100% convinced yet that it's going to work, but it's worth trying anyway. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Um, I think that should give you a pretty good idea of how to go about installing these push rods for the, the blue point switch machines. They make for a very good responsive uh, method of controlling uh, turnout uh, directions. And also, you can use them to control the polarity of the frogs. And that's what we'll be taking a look at on Monday. Because hopefully by then I'll have all of the blue point uh, installations complete to the point of adding the wires uh, to the uh, switches that are built into each one for controlling uh, the frog polarity. So that's what we're going to plan on doing on Monday. So have a good weekend and we'll see you here on Monday with uh, completion of the wiring of these blue point switch machines. Bye now. <laughs>